This work is not for yourselves. Kill that spirit of self and do not live above your people, but live with them. And if you rise, bring someone with you. Stand as tall as time, because these skies bear witness to how mere dust can rise to meet God in the air. Claim yourself, crown yourself, and know yourself as the new day. You are the future that is fashioned from fight and freedom song. Like Mama Charlotte Manya Makleke, like Helen Joseph, Rahima Musa, Lillian Goy, Sophie Williams de Brain stood among the brave, 20,000 to stare down apartheid and proclaim. We are the future that is fashioned from fight and freedom song. A hundred and fifty years ago, the African soil gave birth to the matriarch, the liberation struggle icon, Umama Charlotte Manya Makleke, a beacon of hope and inspiration to all, a woman of firsts. This is why 2021 has been declared the year of Umama Charlotte Manyama Kleke, who dedicated her life to the upliftment of others. On this Women's Day, in the year of Charlotte Manyama Kleke, we recognize the life of Umama, we honor her legacy, and we celebrate her and all the women of South Africa. And now, whether you're in a taxi or at home, watching on TV or on your phone, Please join us for the AU Anthem and the National Anthem.
Thank you, the Living Rock Choir from Limpopo, for that moving delivery of our anthems. Women's Month 2021 is hosted by the province of Limpopo. We now welcome the Premier of Limpopo Province, the Honorable Chupu Matawata. Program Director, Minister Nati Mteto, President of the Republic of South Africa, His Excellency Honorable Matamela Cyril Ramaphosa, esteemed cabinet ministers, members of our parliament, my colleagues in the Provincial Executive Council, members of the Provincial Legislature, various organizations of women in our country, our esteemed traditional leaders, leaders of all our political parties, our faith-based organizations, friends from the media, the beautiful women of our country, esteemed ladies and gentlemen, good day, Tobel Abshin Nda. I greet you in the iconic name of Mama Charlotte Manye Matek. We are celebrating this year's edition of National Women's Day under the theme, the year of Charlotte Manye Matek, realizing women's equality. As Limpopo, we are proud to host this special event celebrated in honor and memory of Mama Charlotte Mateke, daughter of Limpopo, whose roots are firmly grounded on our soil. Charlotte Mateke was born at Haramkhopa in the Capricorn District, Kemurwedi wa Manye We are therefore happy that 150 years since her birthday, her name and legacy lives on. As a provincial government, and as the people of Charlotte Mateke, our contribution to honoring her legacy is to continue the fight against the exclusion and oppression of women. We are committed to fighting against gender oppression in all its different manifestations. We know that we cannot proudly associate ourselves with the name of Charlotte Mateke while we keep silent when women are raped and harassed. We cannot claim to be worthy heirs of the legacy of Mama Charlotte Matleke if we perpetuate or tolerate the emotional abuse of women. We cannot claim to be the descendants of Charlotte Matleke while we dine and wine with those men who do not financially support their wives and children. The Charlotte Matleke in whose memory we are celebrating this National Women's Day, hated exclusion, oppression, and discrimination of women. As the provincial government of Limpopo, we are all hands on deck, acting in partnership with social partners to realize the ideal of women's equality in our lifetime. We have put in place a, a number of equality measures to support our drive from our municipalities and provincial departments. We have programs geared towards empowerment of women. This is not a special favor we are doing for women equality. It is indeed an inherent human right. Program director, it would be a grave injustice if I conclude my welcoming remarks without recognizing the gallant effort of the many women of our province and our country in the battle against COVID-19. Most of the health workers or health care workers, the doctors and the nurses who are in the trenches against this invisible enemy are women. We have launched Women's Month as a province and most of the activities by different sectors are spearheaded by women, particularly to benefit the poor and marginalized in our communities. Mesholot Manya Matleke, a daughter of the soil, a first female science graduate, is being celebrated by women from all walks of life. 
just to name but a few, Limpopo is blessed with a number of different female medical specialists who are spending this month honoring Meshalot Mateke, the woman who paved their way. They are today rendering their specialist services in rural areas. Amongst others, surgeons in different specialities are spending weeks in rural hospitals operating patients. For example, our female ophthalmologist will be operating 150 cataracts to poor people in the villages. The victories we have recorded thus far against this deadly virus is owed to, to their selfless and fearless efforts by women. Indeed, Charlotte Mateka would have been very proud of the bravery of the women of this generation. Women have also been leading when it comes to the important task of vaccination. Our numbers are confirming that women are providing practical leadership against this virus. This is our moment to say to all the women of our country, with you leading from the front, we know that victory is certain. Program Director, our work is far from being completed. We should not and will not rest until the total liberation of women of this country is achieved. COVID-19 is still very much with us. Therefore, we are making a clarion call that all of us must continue adhering to all prescribed protocols and stay safe. We take this opportunity to dispel the myth that those who are getting vaccinated are prone to death and sicknesses. We want to say to you that that is far from the truth. Scientific evidence has shown that vaccinated people are safer or in safer space than those who are not. Go on, encourage all those who are eligible to go and get vaccinated. With those few ways of welcome, I wish to take this opportunity and say happy Women's Day to all the women of our country. I thank you, Mr. President. We women are always first, as shown by those among us who were sent to world stages, Major Mandi Samfeka, Rifilwe Letwaba, Major Catherine Labuskakhni, Asnath Mahapa. Keep rising so that they can see you and also be fly. Khotazo Monjani, you game set and outmatch all opponents on the courts. Without us as women, the world is nothing. Lewohang Munyati, show little girls that beauty is limitless and dreams can be bigger than infinity. Invite us to the table so that we can work together to create a better South Africa for all. Tatiana Schoonmaker, Joburg woman with gold dust beneath your feet. We are a country rich in gold, inspired by the spirit of Umama Charlotte Manya Matleke. Now, to deliver a message of support, welcome the Minister in the Presidency for Women, Youth and Persons with Disabilities, the Honorable Maite Nkwana Mashabane. Your Excellency, Mrs. Thrall, Madam Mela Ramaphosa, President of the Republic of South Africa, Honorable Natim Teto, Minister of Sports, Arts and Culture, Honorable uh, Mr. Stanley Chupu Matabata, Premier of the Mpopo Province, uh, fellow South Africans, today marks 65 years since that iconic march to the Union buildings, which saw the brave women of our country take a stand against the country's past laws. As we celebrate Women's Day, we honor, remember, and salute all women from all generations who have been part of our struggle and have made significant contributions for our nation's freedom and democracy and development. We commemorate this uh, important day 
end month under the theme which we had agreed upon from the beginning of the year, the year of Charlotte Manya Matrek. When we celebrate the Women's Day, we honor, remember, and salute all women from all generations. May Matrege has been the first black woman graduate with Bachelor of Science uh, degree from University uh, of Wilberforce in the United States of America. She also uh, established colleges coming back home in Botogo in Limpopo, Edutra in Eastern Cape, and Everton in Gauteng. She was part of the uh, South Africans and Americans included who felt that they were not well treated in the Methodist church there in America. Then they started the African Methodist Episcopal Church. She led first march against the past laws in 1913. As we celebrate this day, we are not ob oblivious to the main challenges facing women of our country. The impact of dual pandemics, COVID-19, of gender-based violence and femicide remains major concerns and is disruptive to our collective efforts to make strides for women empowerment uh, in our country. COVID-19 has affected the lives and the livelihoods of uh, our women, our people, uh, the hardest hit. We wish for South Africa and South Africans to reflect on the country's strides in achieving gender equality and total emancipation of women. It is also a day for introspection for all of us of the existing challenges facing our women in our country. The scourge of violence against women, poverty, unemployment, exploitation of women, human trafficking, amongst many, are but some of the challenges that need our concerted effort. Economic independence is a key to freeing women from shackles of depending on their perpetrators for livelihoods. We call on governments, uh, departments, and private sector to give 40% procurement to women-owned businesses, even when there is no legislation, as well as this would be a moral duty to have a just and equal society as enshrined in our constitution and reach 50-50 by 2030. Let us lead the way to ensure a just and equal society that women who marched in 1956 fought for. Have a safe and wonderful Women's Day. Malibo Ongwe.
We are truly a vibrant, dynamic and colorful nation. We are also a resilient nation, known for our unity in moments of crisis, willing to work together in building the nation which we are all proud of. We are Mzansi. Thank you to all of the performers who reminded us of all that and more. Next up, let us welcome the Minister of Sport, Arts and Culture, the Honorable Natim Tetwa. Program Director, His Excellency, the President of the Republic of South Africa, Mr. Matamera Siril Ramaphosa, Ministers and Deputy Ministers here present, Premier of Limpopo Province, Mr. Stan Matabata, the host province for the Women's Day this year, MSCs and members of the provincial legislature, women's organizations, traditional leaders, representatives of various political formations, civil society representatives, members of the media, South Africa at large. Today, we celebrate National Women's Day, which is part of our national commemorative calendar. Many parts of our country have taken the initiative since the beginning of this month to mark Women's Month, leading to this national day of celebration today. In terms of the rationale for our commemorative program, government looks to national days such as Women's Day as one of the strategic levers to promote the constitutional rights of women. Given the declaration made by the president on the national state of disaster and owing to the rampant spread of the deadly COVID-19 pandemic, it stands to reason that the 2021 National Women's Month is anchored around commemoration of the trailblazer Mama Charlotte Manya Matleg. 2021 marks the 150th anniversary of the struggle icon and human rights campaigner Charlotte Matleg. Hence, the rallying cry for the 2021 National Women's Month is the year of Charlotte Manya Matleg, realizing women's rights. This theme is aimed at promoting women's quality and sustaining the fight against gender-based violence and femicide. Critical focus areas for this year's celebration include, amongst others, promoting meaning and understanding of the significance of Women's Day, reflecting on women who have served as role models in all the facets of life in South Africa in the past and the present with specific focus on Charlotte McClague. It is incumbent on each and every one of us to use this day to reflect on the challenges that women continue to face, as well as the possible solutions that could be used to remove such challenges. In particular, poverty and financial exclusion and for grounding opportunities that are available for women. Furthermore, we should seek ways in which women can access these opportunities and move from poverty to, to generational wealth. Ultimately, we should establish programs and processes to accelerate women's participation in, for instance, supply chain uh, management or supply value chains through preferential procurement in the public and private sector to ensure that women have access to an ownership of productive resources. Government appreciates that there are pressing contemporary issues. The economic empowerment of women remains a priority. As a nation, we also celebrate the recent sporting achievements at the Olympic Games in Tokyo, Japan. It is women who are leading from the front. Olympians, such as swimming sensation Tatiana Skunmaker, who earned South Africa's first gold medal at the Tokyo Olympics by storming to a world record time in the 200-meter breaststroke. 
This also includes women with disability in sport, women's rights in sport, especially considering Women's Month theme of advancing women's rights, as well as the rights of the LGBTQI plus community. Women's rights are human rights. Thank you for your attention. Fellow South Africans, today is an important day in the life of the women of our country, but also in the life of our nation. Exactly 65 years ago today, 20,000 South African women from all walks of life and from various parts of the country marched to the Union buildings to demand an end to the dehumanizing past laws of the apartheid regime. Despite the dangers of challenging apartheid authorities, they asserted their worth as human beings and refused to be relegated to the margins of history in their own country. We salute the courage of this generation and its leaders, among them Lillian Goy, Rahima Musa, Helen Joseph, Sophie de Brain, Albertina Sisulu, Betha Gowa, Mutalipula Chabaku, and many others. We have declared 2021 as the year of Charlotte Manya Matlake, a courageous women's rights activist, and also a leader who was born 150 years ago. We celebrate this year of her birth because we want to encourage the women of our country to follow in her example and her footsteps. We celebrate the resolve of these women to determine their own destiny. At the same time, we pay tribute to today's generation of women, just as the women of 1956, who fought against the injustices of their time. The women of today are engaged in a new struggle. It is a struggle for equal rights, dignity, economic liberation, and freedom from violence. Women have always been instrumental in the advancement of the human cause. They have played a crucial role in the struggle for freedom, for justice and equality. And yet it is women who always bear the brunt of inequality discrimination, marginalization, poverty, and violence. Like the women of 1956, the present generation of women must lead the struggle for a society that is free of these ills, and particularly the patriarchal relations that cause them. Such a society is both possible and absolutely necessary. By working together, by refusing to submit, we will achieve true gender equality in our lifetime. If we are to do so, we must eradicate all forms of gender-based violence, violence against women, children, gender non-conforming persons, and members of the LGBTQI plus community threatens the very foundations of our democracy. It has been three years since we convened the Presidential Summit on Gender-Based Violence and Femicide to end this scourge. Last year, we launched the National Strategic Plan to end gender-based violence and femicide. 
It has been greatly encouraging that different segments of society, from the faith community to business, to developmental partners, to broader civil society, that they have all taken ownership of the National Strategic Plan. And they've made this plan an important part of their work. Today, we are formally releasing the one-year progress report on the implementation of the National Strategic Plan. Over the past year, in partnership with civil society, we have worked together to give effect to the six pillars of the National Strategic Plan. Although the launch of the plan coincided with the outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic, we have nonetheless made progress as part of the work to provide justice and support to survivors of gender-based violence 32 regional courts have been designated as sexual offenses courts in various parts of the country. Around 3,500 family violence, child protection, and sexual offenses investigating officers have received specialized training to do their work. 12 public buildings have been renovated and repurposed to be used as shelters. And work has been done to ensure that all police stations in our country have sexual assault evidence kits. There has been important legal reform as well. Key legislation around domestic violence, bail and the sentencing of offenders, as well as the broadening of the scope of social, sexual offenses and other matters is currently before Parliament. Our courts are handing down harsh penalties and sentences to those found guilty of gender-based violence and conviction rates in sexual offenses cases have improved. We will soon ratify the International Labor Organization's Convention 190, which addresses sexual harassment and violence in the workplace. Earlier this year, we launched the first phase of the innovative GBVF Private Sector Response Fund. And this fund has to date received about 140 million rand in pledges. Based on the success of raising funding for this fund, I call on businesses, donors, philanthropists, and individuals to contribute to the fund's work. Government has allocated approximately 21 billion rand over the next three years to support the six pillars of the National Strategic Plan. A critical pillar of the plan is to ensure women's economic and financial inclusion. One way we are achieving this is by creating procurement opportunities for women-owned businesses within the public sector supply chain. Last year, we announced that 40% of public procurement should go to women-owned or operated businesses. And we are calling on the private sector to make a similar commitment to enhance the empowerment of the women of our country. 
a Women's Economic Assembly will be launched later this month to identify supply chain opportunities for women-owned businesses in key industries such as steel, automotive, and the energy sectors. Work is underway to develop a financial inclusion policy to address the barriers that are experienced by women-owned businesses and low-income earners to access credit, to also access grants and other financial transactions. The coronavirus pandemic has been particularly harsh on women and children. When growth at the economic level stalls, when development is halted, and when the economy loses jobs, we know that it is women who bear the brunt disproportionately. The social and economic refill, relief measures that we implemented last year provided much needed support to women, workers, small business owners, and grant recipients. However, we know that the levels of employment and income among women have not recovered as fast as their male counterparts. We are therefore working to ensure that women benefit from the most recent relief measures and from our economic reconstruction and recovery plan. Our commitment towards the empowerment of women in this country has been matched by our commitment to advancing the position of women on our African continent. We are working to ensure that the protocol on women in trade enables the effective participation of African women in the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement. We are also working to ensure that women and young people are well represented at the Intra-Africa Trade Fair, which we will host in November. South Africa was part of the United Nations Generation Equality Forum that took place in June of this year, where we made clear commitments to protect and promote women's leadership and representation across society. Through the Charlotte McClague Women's Initiative on Economic Justice and Rights, we are mobilizing global support for projects that promote increased opportunities for women and girls in decision-making across political and economic spheres. Fellow South Africans, we're also determined to build a South Africa in which women will enjoy all the rights, all the freedoms, and all the liberties that our Constitution guarantees. Although we have gone a long way to empower the women of our country, there is still much to be done. We want to live in a society where women feel safe and are indeed safe. We want to live in a society where women are able to assume leadership positions in the workplace, in the community, in government, and in all public institutions. We also want to live in a society where women's opportunities are not limited by social attitudes and practices or even by economic circumstances of women. 
We want to live in a society where every girl child can study what she wants to study and for as long as she needs to and where she can take up any occupation or pursue any career of her choice. I call on every South African to join this most important struggle. Let us reject sexism in our homes, in our churches, in our schools, in our organizations, and yes, in government, and in places of work as well. Let us together raise a new generation of men and women who understand that the rights and freedoms guaranteed by our Constitution belong to all men and women alike. I take this opportunity to wish the women of South Africa and indeed all the people of our country a happy Women's Day. I thank you.